I have another question for you, and I'm all full of IDs today. Um, isn't Apple the same as a pair? Well, they're different. And <laughs> chances are, any time we're talking about uh, penetration testing and vulnerability assessments, well, they're both very different things and obviously are for different reasons and requirements, right? So in this video, we're going to cover all things difference of vulnerability versus penetration testing. So to my left here, I'm going to put vuln, uh, vuln assessments because it's a vulnerability assessment. And then to my right, I am going to put a pen test. And let's cover some of the basics and updates around what the two are. Uh, some benefits, some pros and cons across both of them. And, you know, let's just sort of go through what the differences are um, across these two different um, security assessments, right? So firstly, when we start talking about, let me just get my purple pen here to resonate the, the Vuln assessment. Um, so anytime we talk about vulnerability assessments, think about this as some sort of software we're going to run. So some sort of software, and typically it's going to be automated, and it's going to do a lot of the grunt work for us. It's going to go away. It's going to show us the patch levels. It's going to show us, you know, vulnerabilities that are potentially part of that operating system. Uh, it's going to define that OS, define ports, you know, what's sort of, what's vulnerable, right? And again, sort of tying back to, to what's, what's across the infrastructure, right? Um, so, Typically, when we do Vuln assessments, we're scanning across workstations. We've got servers, maybe network devices, things like that, right? So it's going to go across our environment and it's going to assess those vulnerabilities across that infrastructure. And then it's going to come back and it's going to say, well, here's a report that says, you know, critical one is X, Y, Z, critical two is X, Y, Z, critical three. And it's going to give us a, a management update across our hardware, across our technology, across our infrastructure. Sometimes the challenge with Vuln assessments, as we've sort of mentioned before, is that uh, it sort of leads to false positives across the environment. And we've got to go away and then obviously sift through that false information to prove its validity. So I'm just going to say, proof of uh, validity. And this is just basically saying that I've got to go away then and manually define those false identifications across different stacks of infrastructure that we currently have. So sometimes having said that, it's it's quite challenging because as the false positives, it, it's got to define and it's got to identify uh, what's positively defined, but is it really a risk? So it all sort of comes down to the, the risk appetite across the environment. And that's sometimes a challenge because if it's false, it's then giving you a false sense of risk. It may not be an accurate indication of risk because it potentially is not existing. So we then have to go through that and then manage that risk appetite across those false uh, positives that are sort of coming up in the environment. So we've got to go through our change, obviously change management, our risk management cycles, enterprise wide risk management and define you know, obviously with due care and due diligence, what are the articulated risks and the estimated vulnerabilities in, in the environment, right? So they may not be there. So then we've got to go away and do that manual uh, manual part. So well, that's where pen testing comes into play. And when we talk about pen testing, I'd sort of call this sort of actively exploiting. And to be a pen test, you must have to actively prove the validity of that vulnerability. And to do that, well, you must actively exploit it. Now, you may think, well, in many environments, some customers don't want to be doing this. And that's fair because it may bring something down. Again, if it's a kernel exploit, if it's something that's potential, a code execution that's going to bring something down, well, then it's going to cause a lot of havoc for certain people and certain divisions. So part of that risk process may be, well, don't exploit anything, just flag it as a critical risk. And then my team and I can go away and we can sort of define it. So anytime we talk about pen testing, we are going away and we are actively exploiting those vulnerabilities that have been found. So identifying and actively exploiting and testing the positivity or testing they are positive and they are in fact a risk. So that's kind of the two differences around 
I guess, vulnerability assessments and pen testing. Obviously, we need to define and identify the vuln, and then we'll move over into that exploit phase. Now, I've been across many environments where um, these things have happened by mistake. So we had the assumption that it was all good, that we can go away and exploit, and then something occurs, and then you've got an incident or something occurs where someone calls you and they go, well, Andrew, you've exploited this and now there's duplications of records and our payment processings have duplicated. You know, what are we going to do? And then you go into a crisis because things may not have been articulated in a certain manner. So we've got to go there and obviously have those discussions to upfront to under, under, understand and have that clear expectation around, well, what are the actual requirements when we are doing the pen test? And the customer may say, well, you can actively exploit, but that's it. You cannot do any pivoting. You cannot do any lateral movement or any post-exploit activities. And that's another video that we're going to cover shortly. We'll talk about post-exploitation. But in this video, they may just say to you, well, Andrew, just get to the point of exploiting that vulnerability. Or they may have a nice test environment. And you're lucky enough to be utilizing that test environment. And they'll say, Andrew go for your, you know, throw the kitchen sink at it, right? And you've got this test environment that you can do anything and everything and it's not going to impact production. Isn't that a wonderful world that we could live in? Uh, chances are it's not, you know, it, it's not everywhere. So sometimes we do have to test and do things in production. We may have the glory and the, the happy days of, in you know, testing the test environment. Um, but then we just got to have that very clear and upfront rules of engagement to define how far and wide are we going to go with our active exploitations. So let's talk about a bit of a comparison down here. And I'm just going to do pros and cons of each. And pros and cons of, of both areas of, I'm going to say, of phone management. Let me just clean that up a little bit. And I'm just going to say pros and cons here. Actually, this could have been a lot easier if I just do it under one thing, right? Um, so let's just do, I'm just going to clean it up and just go, let's just do Vaughn here. And then I will do pen testing on the same side so it doesn't confuse anything. And then pen test on this side. All right. So with Vaughn assessments, let's compare the two. So the very first thing that I would say, well, with Vaughn assessments, typically uh, it's lower costs associated with um with vulnerability assessments, because there's not a lot of uh, manual effort. Typically, you're just going to point something at something, and then you're just going to run that assessment. And then, you know, it's a low skill set, pretty much. Right, so it, it doesn't really need much. You can just point some things out. You can use Nessus, uh, you know, some great tools that are out there, and you can incorporate that into, um, you know, our vulnerability, vulnerability management cycle. Um, the other thing is that typically internally as well, that can be done internal and external. So you can have uh, a party or third party that comes in and does your third party vulnerability management, or if you've got an internal team um, that can go away and obviously internally do this, they're going to be obviously a little bit better because then you can have, you know, provide updates and obviously they can both do whatever one can do, the other one can do, but typically a lot of vulnerability management is happening internally within the organization um, opposed to the external, but we obviously do see a lot of external third parties do vulnerability management as well. Um, typically with vulnerability management, there's no exploit unless there's a specific need or a specific requirement during that vulnerability management. And typically, um, the other thing there that we mentioned as well is our false positives. So there's a lot of false, um, I was going to say false positive, um, and false positives, right? So it's less invasive. Uh, it obviously is scanning and documenting. It's giving us an estimation. And I'm going to say estimation because it's an estimate uh, across the environment, right? So estimation uh, of vulnerabilities and business impact because they're obviously not tested yet. So we don't know the actual business impact until we've gone away and you know actively exploit it. So having said that, now with that we've got our vulnerabilities here of our comparison chart, I'm gonna do pen testing. Well, te pen testing typically is more expensive and it's more expensive because it's a higher skill set, right? We've got to have very specific people, whether it's maybe application or AppSec specialists 
or maybe it's network and infrastructure specialists, or maybe it's a cloud specialist, or maybe it's a mobile pen tester, right? Or maybe it's a sort of phishing expert, all right? And the list goes on. So, you know, it's typically a higher skill set, um, which means obviously higher costing. Um, and typically we can also have um, pen testing done internally as well as externally. So it's quite similar in, in, in that sort of, um, uh, in that nature. So I'm just gonna say external. Um, if companies are big enough, they can have their own internal pen testing team and red teaming uh, adversarial team. Uh, most cases, you've obviously got your external third parties coming in that are doing this and you've got a range of people that uh, are a specialty across different breeds. Um, depending on the engagement lengths, the engagement styles, and things like that. So the other thing that we want to note is um, obviously prove the vulnerability, right? So now we've got something that's vulnerable. Depending on the engagement style, the guys are going to go away and exploit and perform that and, and give you that accurate risk, right? And everything comes down to uh, risk management at the end of the day. So you know, how we're going to manage this, we got to have that, you know, defined because obviously there's business disruptions, systems may crash, things may occur. And then obviously, you know, you've got to have some sort of role plan or a rollback plan on how we're going to manage if something goes wrong. So comms is really, 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 really important when we're talking about doing pen testing. Um, I always communicate, make sure that communication is the number one important priority, how we're going to communicate to stakeholders who are responsible, data custodians, data owners of the inf infrastructure and environment. And then obviously, if something does go wrong, how do we intend to uh, either roll back or remediate? So there's a conversation you want to have before you exploit. So before we're going away and exploiting, we need to go and have a discussion with these people. Uh, who we've defined in our rules of engagement. And then we define those and say, well, hey guys, we're going to be performing X, Y, Z, you know, um, code execution, RCE, or whatever we found in the environment. Uh, are you okay with this? And if we do do this, well, here's what's going to happen. And then we have to give them a list of things that could potentially go wrong. Uh, and then our potential remediation phase and how we intend to remediate and recover if anything does pop and break and crash and now it's caused business disruption, right? Because then everyone's going to now point to you and say, well, you broke it and then you may be liable for certain things. So just be very cautious with these things. Uh, it's going to impact business. It's going to always impact the dollars and cents across the organization. Should a system go down for three hours or six days because you, they have to then notify a third party software team. And then to do that, it's going to be a three day, you know, turnaround time. And then two days get spent on discussing the issues. And now you've spent, well, you've lost the business six days of productivity, which may mean X amount of dollars. So just be very cautious when you're going to go away and exploit, always communicate, have a clear process and a clear rules of engagement that says, and I think this video is going on way too longer than I intended, but that's okay. Now rules of engagement that says do's and don'ts very explicitly define. Uh, you've got your escalation paths, and then you may also have your methodology process. Now methodology process kind of gets broken down into, well, if this engagement is a span of four weeks, and in that four weeks, maybe the first week, we're going to spend doing OSINT across the environment. Maybe week two, we're going to do the wireless network. So we're going to be on site. Maybe week three, we're going to do physical. And then probably week four would probably be spent on reporting. Now, if, that's the style, if this is the style of the engagement, that's fine. We then have to define, and sometimes I have to define, well, what tool sets are we going to be using during OSINT? And so I might say, well, between one day one and day five, we're going to be using, you know, Recon NG. We're going to be using AMAS. We're going to be using XYZ. And then each of these tool sets have to get defined. Um, some customers prefer that and they actually want to know what tool sets you use, but then you give them a clear plan or a process. Well, you're going to get your draft report at this phase. You're going to get your final report here. And then during this cycle, we're going to go through retesting. And then we'll do our final report and final closure and our final attestation to say that 
you know, you are happy with our work and you're going to sign off on that and say, yes, Andrew has delivered the pen test. We're happy with the services. Everything has been completed and there's been no issues, right? So you're going to give that plan and you're going to define all those characteristics and all the milestones and outcomes based on that engagement and that style. And then all that sort of ties back into your ROE. So how you intend to do that. Um, and that sort of covers um, a little bit about both areas. So we've talked about vulnerability management. We've talked about our pen testing. I hope you found this video useful. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.